So you have heard the entire Christmas story this morning, haven't you? A couple times, three or four times. I'm going to read to you the entire Christmas story this morning, and I'm going to stay within my timeline. So I'm going to let you guys be seated for this part, okay? Because I know that this is going to be a long reading, right? Here we go. Titus. What, yeah, Titus, not Luke, Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared. That's it. Seven words. That's Titus. Paul did when he was writing to Titus. He did what Luke took most of the chapter to do. He did it in seven words. What? Yeah. <laughs> My dad, he says, I just found it, and you're already done. That's right. Just hold your place there, though, because we're going to talk about it a little bit. Isn't that the Christmas story? For the grace of God has appeared. Past tense, that's a verb, talks about what Jesus did in Bethlehem. That's what we've been singing about. That's what we've been celebrating. All of that wrapped up in seven words. For the grace of God has appeared. That's Jesus. This same Jesus was born in Bethlehem. This same Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He was laid in a manger. Do you remember the story? This is the same Jesus that the shepherds visited. The wise men later visited this same Jesus. This same Jesus it talks about over there in John chapter 1 when he started his public ministry and he started selecting his disciples. That was the same Jesus that we've been studying about all through the book of John for the last two plus years, isn't it? This Jesus, the one we celebrate, his birth, that was when the grace of God appeared, isn't it? This same Jesus over in Matthew 14 fed the 5,000. You remember that? All over the gospel, gospels, this same Jesus healed the sick. He, he, he raised Lazarus. Remember that in John, in our study in John? He raised him from the dead. And he wasn't just dead, right, church? What was he? Dead, dead. Right? We talked about that. Four days had gone by, right? God wanted to make sure that we knew that this Jesus was the Messiah. The choir sang a song, Jesus Messiah. Not just Jesus. We have people today named Jesus. Some of them pronounce it Jesus, right? Anybody can be named Jesus, but to be the Messiah that's different. That's the Jesus that we've been talking about this morning. That's the Jesus that all those little ones were singing about this morning. That's the Jesus that the choir was singing about today. This same Jesus. We see all the miracles that he did. But you know what this same Jesus does in John chapter 19? He goes to the cross. You know, we celebrate his birth, but why did he come? What was his purpose for coming? You got your finger there in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The next part, after he, he gives us the Christmas story in seven words, he adds this, bringing salvation for all people. There it is. The Christmas story and his purpose for coming in the same verse. One verse. All that packed into one verse. He came for you. He came for me. He came, the, the reason he humbled himself was because of you and me. We sang, Great is Our God. You remember that one? How great is is your love for us. I was listening to that song this morning and I was thinking, you know, that's the problem with most religions in the world. 
is they're dependent upon how great our love is for whoever they call God. But that's not the gospel, is it? That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that his great, his love was so great for us that he sent his son. This same Jesus, not just to be humbled in a manger, but to be humbled on a cross. Because that's what it took. It took more than the manger. It took the cross. This same Jesus came to die. But we celebrate his birth. That's just the part of verse 11 there where it says, for the grace of God has appeared, past tense. Watch this in verse 13. This same Jesus will appear again. Verse 13, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing, this time it's a noun, but it's talking about the time, the event that Jesus is going to appear again, appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's the first appearing and the second in just two verses. Wrapped up in a passage that's only three or four verses long. We could stay right there for a year, couldn't we? And talk about this one passage. When the grace of God appeared, that's when we were supplied with hope. That's when we were given a way to be with Christ in, in heaven eternally, right? It took that appearing for that to happen, but it took the cross. And now that the cross is done, because he didn't stay dead, did he? Three days later, he arose. We've been singing about that all morning, haven't we? Three days later, he arose, and that made all the difference. The birth, that's all great, but that was just the prequel, right? That was the, the, the thing that was required prior to the cross. See, we like to get around Christmas, and we like to celebrate, you know, the birth of Christ. Well, what about celebrating his return? Not just his birth and resurrection, but he's coming back. He's going to appear again. And that's what Paul tells Titus here in verse 13. He says, we're waiting for that day. We're longing for that day. Some of you young ones, you're, you're longing for Christmas. How many days away is it? I heard somebody say six. Is that true? Somebody did the math? Yeah, that was one, one of our little ones. Some of you older people are taking your phones out and you're, you're trying to get to your calculator app, you know, you know. These guys have it memorized, right? They're longing for that day. They can't wait. Some of you, you got presents already piled up under the tree. They're ready to go, right? And we long for that day. In the same way, Paul's telling Titus, he says, we long for the day that Jesus Christ and all his glory will come again. And this time, <laughs> he's not coming to a manger. And he ain't going to no cross. That's why he came. That's why we celebrate. The big question is, are you ready? Not for the grace of God to have appeared in the manger, on the scene, on earth. But are you ready for the appearing? Verse 13 calls it. The one where he comes back to claim his own. Are you ready for that? Listen, we've been singing all morning about Jesus. You've heard the Christmas story several times over already this morning. We don't need to read the entire thing again in the message. We can just see here that it says, For the grace of God has appeared. That's Christmas. That's what we celebrate. But we got to be ready. We got to be ready for when the appearing happens. When he comes again for you and I. Listen, I don't know your condition. I don't know your heart's condition when it comes to a relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I can tell you this, he's your only hope. 
He's the greatest gift. There is nothing that will be under the tree this year that will be greater than what happened in that manger, than what happened in Bethlehem, and eventually what happened on the cross. He did that for you. You don't have to earn it. You can't earn it. You just have to receive it. You just have to accept a gift that's already paid for you. You know, in six days, as Malcolm said, in six days, you're going to be handed some presents from under your tree. And they're not going to come with a payment book, right? They're not going to say, look, for 20 bucks, you can have your present. They're not going to say that, are they? It's going to be a bunch of stuff wrapped up that's already been paid for. That's what Jesus did on the cross for you. He wrapped up the gift of salvation. That's what verse 11 says here, that he's bringing salvation for all people. He says, there's the gift. It's all wrapped up. It's got your name on it. All you got to do is take it and receive it. He says, that's it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. Aren't you glad for that? Because God's word says we can't. All we have to do is accept what he did on Calvary for us. That's Christmas. It doesn't stop at the manger. It goes through the cross. And it comes to the appearing. And then the point where we get that glorified body. And we get to be with him eternally in heaven. This same Jesus loved you so much that even though you were not worthy, he came, he died for you, he rose again, and he's longing for that day to be reunited face to face with you and with me. What better gift this season could we possibly imagine?